What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Steelers Breakdown. Wednesday here. I just got back from day 12 of Steelers training camp practices. We'll talk a little bit about some of practice and a little bit of that, but I do want to dedicate this episode mostly to the topic that everyone's talking about. I haven't really discussed it in depth in a podcast, so yes, we will be talking about Brandon Ayuk today. I understand that most of you over the last two days have probably become a little bit Brandon ayuk out, if you will. It just seems to be going in motion uh, and everyone's waiting for it to end. And I, I agree with you. Um, I am sitting on edge consistently throughout the last few days where I have just been at dinner. I'm like, is it going to break? I am taking my laptop everywhere with me just to be sure, just in case, just in case it breaks during an inopportune time because I am ready for it whenever it happens. Uh, and, and so I look, folks, at what the Steelers and what the 49ers have to do. And I, I just, I have a few thoughts on it. First of all, let's kind of try our best, at least. Let's try our best to separate fact and fiction. I think that is a is an important thing to do, first of all. So when we're talking about where the Steelers are in this race, it really feels like it's them and then everybody else. Uh, honestly, it really doesn't feel any different than that. And so the Pittsburgh Steelers are very much where they are right now because Brandon Ayuk wants to go to Pittsburgh. I think if New England or Cleveland had been one of his destinations, I think he probably would be there already. He doesn't want to be there. And and so there's two facts to this. One, you have to satisfy Brandon Ayuk's contract demands. He wants 30 a year. Remember, he wants that Amon Ross St. Brown contract or more. Um, and so that's his demands. And then you also have to satisfy what the 49ers want. It seems like the 49ers want to move on from this. But the 49ers are still in a place of leverage to where they don't theoretically have to move Brandon Ayuk right now. And the reason is, if he is going to sit out games, then I think things get more serious. But will Brandon Ayuk really sit out one of his prime years? He can't sit out the whole year because his contract will toll. This isn't like Le'Veon Bell, for example, where he had never signed that franchise tag and therefore was truly never under contract. So it's not the same situation. Um, so that's probably not going to happen. So they could keep him. They could rent, land a resolution, but they have not had contract talks since May, folks. The the 49ers and Brandon Ayuk have not talked about a contract since May. So this hasn't really gone, to be quite honest with you, any. So I'm not quite sure when we're looking at this, where the resolution would be from the 49ers side. And I really think that it is kind of more than anything because they haven't talked, that the productive talks are just non-existent. There are no productive talks because there haven't been any talks, period. And so you could reignite those. But... When you look at where the Steelers are in terms of what they need and likely value because they have a place of great leverage because Brandon Ayuk wants to play here and doesn't want to play for the other suitors, the Steelers are going to be in a spot of power. So they don't have to cave for what the 49ers may want. The 49ers are pretty clearly trying to signal they want this done. And I do think the 49ers could theoretically go up to Brandon Ayuk and say, hey, seven more million this year. We won't franchise tag you next year. Come back for one more run. That could happen. But it seems like that's not really an option. Kyle Shanahan seems quite annoyed by it. And so I think right now that's where we're at. We're at a standoff point where the Steelers have largely hammered out the details on the Brandon Ayuk side of this. I think they have satisfied the Brandon Ayuk contract side of this. It's can they get to that point where the 49ers 
believe they can get value. Man, John Lynch is one of the best in the game, but Omar Khan is a really good poker face. And so these guys are just going back and forth. It's mano y mano. And so I do think this gets done eventually. I don't really have a certain timeline. It could happen today. It could happen a week from now. I think this is all very, very fluid. And I think there are a lot of details that really need to be kind of figured out before this happens. I don't think that it is so close that you need to be on watch in like the next 30 minutes after I put this out, for example. Um, but it's it, they are obviously talking and it's, it's starting to pick up steam. So the next question then is, okay, the Steelers are where Brandon Ayuk wants to go. Brandon Ayuk wants to play for the Steelers. The Steelers are talking to the 49ers about Brandon Ayuk. They have already talked to Brandon Ayuk with the permission of the 49ers. So what would you need? So what you would need to give up for Brandon Ayuk is a very fluid conversation. The Browns theoretically could have offered, for example, Mari Cooper plus a pick. It seems like the Patriots have offered Kendrick Bourne and picks. If you're looking at the Steelers' equivalent of what that would be, you know, obviously the Cooper one would be George Pickens. Folks, the 49ers probably asked about George Pickens. And more than anything, I don't think they will give up George Pickens. I don't think they'll give up Pat Frymuth. They might give up James Daniels. I think that one doesn't make – it's not complete nonsense. Does it create a hole? Sure, it does. And on an offensive line that you just rebuilt, yes. But it seems like they're not going to negotiate with James Daniels. And if he's going to walk after this year, you can understand the move. And and obviously you would have three guys in the room there, Spencer Anderson, Nate Herbig, and Mason McCormick that you could theoretically plug in there. It's not a great situation if you trade James Daniels, but you could probably make it work. But I think the draft picks are going to be key here. First of all, a first-round pick I think would accelerate how this would get done. I think this would – if the Steelers threw a first round pick on the table, I think that this would get done very quickly. I don't think the Steelers want to give up their first round pick. I also don't want to think they want to give up a premium player. The 49ers want some type of very big time player and less picks or more picks and a role play. So the Steelers might have to give up some player. It's probably not going to be just a fleece job, right? It's going to hurt a little bit. And so I think a second round pick makes a lot of sense, um, at least as part of the deal. But then what happens? Is it a second in James Daniels? Is it a second and a third and, and another role player type? I think that's the question here. And so the Steelers have to find that right balance of what satisfies the 49ers without completely hurting themselves. And like, for example, trading George Pickens makes no sense. The whole point of trading for Brandon Ayuk is that you have figured out your wide receiver one and wide receiver two situation, right? That is the point of doing it. If you trade for Ayuk and trade Pickens, you're basically right back where you were. Who's the two, right? And and so you don't want to be in that situation. And so the Steelers really have to strike a balance here. I think a second round pick is fair. I think what the 49ers want to do is... They want to try and get these picks if they don't get a top player because they want a player that can help them win the Super Bowl. So let's say their demand is a second and a third. It makes sense because they're going to want to flip those picks for another player. And I think they also have to vet the market. Um, you know, They don't necessarily have to flip that those picks for another wide receiver, but they could flip them for an offensive lineman. They could flip them for pass rush depth. Um, they could do a lot of different things with that. Um, so I just think there's levels to this. Um, and I just don't think the 49ers are going to be in a rush to make a move. Um, you know, the Steelers right now are obviously in the driver's seat to land him. I just think we need to understand the different levels to this 
more importantly, why the 49ers seem to want to move on from Brandon Ayuk is important. But more importantly, I just think you look at what the Pittsburgh Steelers have and what they want to do, and they got to find the right balance. Otherwise, they're not going to make this move. Um, It's really that simple. There has to be a balance that is struck for the Steelers. And so it's got to make sense. Same thing for the 49ers. They are going to weigh it out. That's why I just don't think necessarily, you know, unless one of these guys kind of caves, unless John Lynch brings his offer down or suddenly Omar Khan's like, you know what, I will give up a first. I think we're going to be kind of in this spot where it's going to be, well, here's what this happens. Here's what this happens. It feels like eventually Brian Ayuk will be a Pittsburgh steal. I just think it might take a little bit of time. And that's fine. It's just going to keep going on and on and on. So that's really where I think this comes down to is John Lynch is a strong-willed person and is not just going to give up um, on what is and what he wants to do, what he wants to do with this trade, the vision he has. So I think we have to take all these things into consideration when we're talking about Brandon Ayuk and this deal. I think the Steelers land him. I'm not sure it's going to be resolved today. It might not be resolved tomorrow. Heck, he could be traded for in the middle of the Texans game, bro. I know. But he wants to be a Steeler. The contract side of things are already figured out for the most part. And it's really up now to figure out the right compensation package that allows the Steelers and the 49ers to both be happy. That's really where this comes down to. And the, the Steelers get a really big preview playmaker. Speaking of playmakers, um, let's shift gears a little bit. Just, just I do want to talk a little bit about Cam. Let's talk about some wide receivers that are on the team right now. Specifically, I want to talk about Calvin Austin and Van Jefferson. I think these two have separated themselves from the rest of the pack. Van Jefferson has looked very reliable. He's gotten open in soft zones. On the other hand, you look at Calvin Austin, and he has become quite reliable as well. He's made some nice strides in his route running, and he's playing fast. These guys look like the two and the three right now behind George Pickens. If Ayuk did come, these guys would round out very nicely uh, the wide receiving core. So I think you look at what the Steelers have there, and you have clear hierarchy. You have in tier one, you have George Pickens. In tier two, I think you have Van and Calvin. And then I think you have Quez Watkins and Scotty Miller, who have really started to take it up a level. Um, they they these guys have very high floors, and you kind of see the talent that makes them stand out relative to the rest of the guys in the field. And so I really think that is a distinguishing factor when you look at these players. Um, And so the wide receiver room they have right now, if they add Ayuk, it's a legitimately good wide receiver room. I think you could keep five guys and be very happy with Brandon Ayuk, George Pickens, Van Jefferson, Calvin Austin III, and Roman Wilson. I think that's a very solid group of wide receivers. If you wanted to keep six, I think you'd probably put Scotty Miller over Quez Watkins right now, but it's a good group. It's a better group than last year. It's a deeper group. I think they're deeper regardless. They were not very deep last year at wide receiver, and I think they're going to be better pretty much across the board, especially if the IU stuff happens. So this wide receiver room is kind of coming together. I kind of start to see the hierarchy of where it goes, especially if IU comes. Um, makes a lot of sense for where they're fitting this in. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about, talk to Grady Brown today um, about some DB stuff. And and specifically what I want to talk about is Corey Trice. Um, haven't talked a ton about Corey Trice on here. Uh, you know, guy that's coming off a torn ACL really needs to have kind of that comfortability come back to him. And so I was curious to what Grady would say. And and he basically said they're kind of holding him back right now. Um, They are trying 
to make sure he gets it to games and is able to show what he can do in a stadium. Because remember last year, he suffered that injury before he even got on the football field to play in a preseason game. And so he wants to be out there more. And so Corey Trice right now seems like he's a guy that is kind of on the upswing. They have him as the first team dimebacker. You can use his length uh, to make windows even tighter than they would be. Uh, and, and more importantly, that is really where you kind of end up finding out that the Steelers have a lot of guys that could just be versatile, can be different in what they do. Um, you know, Trice, Ryan Watts, Darius Rush, these guys that are huge and have tons of length that can play inside and out. It's interesting because not many teams have guys like this. You don't see dimebackers that are like Corey Trice. He's six foot three. Um, and, and so very interested to see Corey Trice. Very excited to see what he can do in a stadium. But I really think he is a guy that seems to have been more and more comfortable every day. He's not really thinking a ton about, you know, his movements. Is his knee going to be hurt again? He's not really thinking about it. And so you're starting to see him come on. And so I, I'm really excited to see Corey's race. He's one of the guys I'm actually really watching for uh, on Friday. He, he'll he have some good matchups too. Hopefully they can get into dime packages and we can see him up against, you know, one of those really talented receivers. I would literally like to see him up against Tank Dell. I think that would be really fun. All right, folks. Thanks for listening to the podcast. We'll be back tomorrow discussing who knows what. Maybe I, maybe not. I don't know. We will talk about that tomorrow when we cross that bridge. Uh, but game coming up on Friday as well. So a lot to look forward to with the Pittsburgh Steelers this week. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification bell. If you are listening to this on a podcast platform, make sure to leave a review. Thanks for listening, folks.